Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 71 of Orchid Bay, our vanilla city skyline build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And no build this week, instead we're going to take a full city tour, touching on each of the major areas, analysing road network, traffic flow, public transport convergence, and just basking in the living, breathing city that Orchid Bay has become over the last 70 episodes. There's only one place to start. We'll come into this starting interchange where this map very first kicked off 12 months ago. Let's indulge in an Orchid Bay tour, shall we? So we'll start off with the town of Two Church, of course. So, of course, this is where Orchid Bay started from. This roundabout here, this arterial we running uh, over toward the west. And then the couplet going north was the initial structure of uh, Orchid Bay and kind of this little top-down view here was our first episode, wasn't it? And this little bit of industry over by the side. And, uh, good to come back to the start of the city now and see that, you know, this initial road hierarchy structure um, has held up traffic's flowing like an absolute dream. Uh, you know, also bear in mind as we move through today's city, there's no traffic manager here. We don't have any kind of mods to help us make the traffic more efficient. We've had to work with the vanilla tools. So I'm pretty proud of it, to be honest. It's flowing really nicely. There's definitely some improvements to be made. For example, we could remove parking off of these roads here if we wanted to. But um, it's flowing nicely. So we'll kind of move uh, through the city here together and kind of touch on each of the major areas. Uh, our initial industry area, again, no traffic at all. But this is probably testament, again, to the number of highway um, interchanges it has near it. Of course, there's one um, over here by the factory. There's also uh, the main one as well that Sidai built for us. And then there's also further access into the highway uh, down by this slip interchange uh, by the stadium. Uh, which again is pretty simple, isn't it? But it's doing a job at just letting people get on and off the highway. But that was something I always find really important for Cities 1 industry. And I guess Cities 2 industry, although we've not really done too much with Cities 2 industry yet. But just having lots of highway access for them will keep traffic down quite considerably. And then, of course, we tied that into a agriculture campus, didn't we? Repurposing uh, a trade school campus to kind of function as though it's maybe tied in with the industry next door. There's kind of a biodome in here. And maybe some kind of hydroponics research goes on, wasn't it? Was the idea we had behind this. And we actually need to put some assets down in this one. Because um, it is about to hit level 5, which, of course, will give us the museum. Uh, which we'll definitely want to use, but... Uh, we might also do some upzoning as well today as we move across the map because we do have big residential demand. So we might end up doing that at some point. But then returning to the corporate system, um, it's at this point we actually upgrade into bike lanes here. And um, I guess we can check out some of the city stats, can't we, to actually check on some um, analytics regarding cyclists, if we were to put it on. So it's a pretty steady climb. We are actually on a um, decline at the minute with cyclists, if not for a little spike in 2152 well, it's actually on the way down at the minute now i'm not sure why that is maybe that's um because we've stopped using so many cycling roads across the rest of the city so just as the population's gone up the number of cyclists has decreased because we're not really using cycling infrastructure as heavy as we were at the start of the city maybe that could be the reason for that uh, but either way they do get a lot of use and you can really get a long way using the cycle highway now from two church so if you were to start here by the motel um, it runs all the way through here, um, splits off into a pathway here, then links back down into more cycling infrastructure in the downtown. Um, you can get a real nice sort of sample spice, if you like, of um, Orchid based cycle infrastructure here by um, Karen's uh, football match. This is Karen City, I think, isn't it? <laughs> that boy here. Of course, the infamous Barry Nails um, walked from Karen down in a first person tour, didn't he? So yeah, this is a, just a really nice example of the cycling infrastructure across Orchid Bay, um, especially the cycling interchange over by uh, this area here, which we actually did on a live stream. So if you don't watch our live stream VODs, um, you would have missed this. Uh, so yeah, a little cycling interchange that links in. And again, you know, just a little testament to how far away we are from the start of the city, and they can still get all the way over here by cycling. And then this obviously extends in multiple different directions allowing people to cycle pretty much across the entire city now uh, there's very few places that you can't reach by foot or bike essentially uh, and then two church leads into our first transport hub and main town center doesn't it which is a really nice design i love the integration of pedestrian pathways here and um, the couple system remember when we built this 
Uh, we had a lot of concerns that the couplet system was going to back up with traffic, um, which it hasn't. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. And I knew that would happen because we're going to have so much public transport integration here. There's trams, of course, which um, also feed directly into downtown. What we will do is just jump to the end of this tram line and um, where it converges at a little custom bus plaza with bus with trams that go back into uh, the inner city over here. So I think that's another kind of key point of Orchid Bay's review is as the city's grown from its kind of humble beginnings, the transport infrastructure has also grown with it, which is a massive factor in keeping the traffic down in vanilla, at least for me. Anyway, of course, everyone's but slightly different experiences. But I really enjoyed the way this sat, the statue, the plazas, all the open space and the little detailing we did here as well. Next to the tram stop with some decals and some tables. It was, um, it was simpler times, wasn't it? <laughs> I really, really like this town centre. Of course, with the unit building as the focal point. And then uh, the famous hunting ground as well, where we actually do have um, some animals in at the minute. Of course, these keep spawning here. We've got a wolf. Um, is that a carnivorous deer? No, it's just a cougar. The least threatening animal <laughs> in all could be. Uh, but all this time later, the animals are still continuing to spawn um, within the hunting grounds part. We ended up calling it, didn't we? So, uh, yeah, that's really nice. And then this again feeds into the corporate system. And I remember we were working with quite a bit of a historical theme around two church because we wanted to have this as a bit of an old run up toward a castle. And my eventual plan was to have a building up here, kind of at the head of this road to give it a bit more purpose. But um, the rest of the build just didn't pan out that way. I definitely wanted to get the pathways up the nature reserve and um, up Mad Mountain, of course, which was just a little mini park build. We came back here uh, a few episodes later and added the, the cable car system. And then this, of course, comes up to uh, one of the finest viewpoints in the city, doesn't it? Uh, really nice up here. <laughs> we'll definitely include a little nighttime cinematic shot uh, of Orchid Bay from here, I think. I think from this point up here, you can get a real good sense of Orchid Bay's planning, can't you? From the interchanges here to how the culprit flows through, how the tram line is integrated in between that as well. And it just, uh, it just flowed really nicely, I was really happy with this area. I feel like it's definitely one of the more well-planned areas of Orchid Bay, but definitely when I started the map, I just knew how I wanted this space to kind of flow from the initial interchange uh, up and out to an eventual downtown across that horizon, so it was pretty easy to build in that regard. Uh, leaving the town centre, we come into uh, James Redwoods suburb, of course, named after the Redwoods, and the little dual pattern Japanese garden here, which actually turned out really nicely, didn't it? I really like that. We haven't done that anywhere else. Uh, yeah, lots of green cities around here, which is always a nice vibe, isn't it? Um, and then we come into a little bit of a green belt here, where we've got some of the busiest uh, public transport convergence in the city. So this place is pretty crazy. So we'll have a little look at the numbers around this. Hopefully it's going to be quite busy to prove my point. 235. There's definitely more than that coming through this. Um, so this, besides one of the train stations in the downtown, is probably the busiest train station in the city. So there's people arriving from the inner city train lines. Uh, there's intercity trains arriving here as well. Um, alongside this line right here. Um, which is the shuttle service back to um, Orchid by Regional Airport over there. So there's just an enormous convergence, let alone the trams that also run through here that we looked at earlier that come out of the town centre transport hub, plus some suburban buses. It's just an absolute smorgasbord of public transport convergence. Uh, we'll get into the train station here as well and you can just see how nuts it is, right? The platforms are constantly full, just packed with people changing train lines to get to different parts of the city. Uh, so really nice, Orchid Bay has definitely got one of the best uh, planned train infrastructures of any OE city, I think. Um, but again, that was kind of down to Sidai because he already had this line running through this position. It's just us that added the transport hubs onto it. So kind of down to the map maker in that regard there as well. Uh, and then this suburb flows up to the edge of the river where we did a lot of nice key work here with Orchid Bay Eye. Um, kind of having the tiered key, which you can see people do use. They do come down onto this bottom bottom layer here and you know when you've got all those buildings in now what a really cool view <laughs> over to that downtown there just walking along the waterfront uh, so really happy with how all that turned out and this is a very mo modern square here as well big shout out to our uh, patreon Freyden for Freyden Square here I believe isn't it I think it's Freyden Square yeah again more little bits of detailing and 
just another sort of town plaza design that kind of factors the couplet into it. You can kind of see how the couplet carries on here. But of course, the couplet does split um, a little bit further down the road. It kind of splits off into two different variants here. Uh, and then comes past Fraden Square. There's lots of elevated walking pathways through here as well, which again, take people back up to that tram line that comes out of the two church town centre, uh, which is that little unit building over there. And then there's people getting on and off here. Um, this cuts right through the suburb from the train station. Again, a really nice use of pedestrian roads. Uh, we actually ended up upgrading this one from pedestrian because the trams go a lot faster on these tram roads than they do pedestrian roads for obvious reasons. I'm not massively happy with this. I feel like this looks a little bit janky, but it was kind of put in as, as, a, as an afterthought after doing the bridge, which was um, really tied into the theme of the castle, so I didn't want to um, end up ruining that view. But uh, definitely some jank happened here, I think. I'm not massively in love with how this tram line flows. If we end we want a bit of anarchy just to bring the tram line kind of over the bridge. But, uh, you know, we're in vanilla, so no dice. And then the corporate system has a real nice view here as it comes up a switchback. Um, again, there's a kind of a real telling point here is this is one of the arterial roads from the suburbs to the city. And there's more people walking and cycling on this road than there are driving. Uh, which is kind of testament to Orchid Bay's transport infrastructure and early planning and how much that's all tied in now to bringing the traffic down to what is currently um, 84 to 87% it bounces back into between. Which, you know, for a vanilla build of 96,000 people isn't a bad traffic start at all. Uh, so we'll check out some hot points of where that traffic is starting to back up a little bit as well. And then this comes into another train line which then converges out of the initial station and then this crosses the landmass then into the downtown areas uh, where we also come into a stadium here as well i uh, did this on live stream as well we had a bad peanut uh, sports ground here this is a gorgeous looking stadium isn't it i really really like this one but yeah we had this over here and then this spills into a big enormous pedestrian plaza where we've got our concert area the statues here there's underground metro as well uh, that people come into. How busy did this station end up being? Only 17, so actually not that busy at all, is it? Where does it go? Yeah, it's the end of the line from one of the downtown loops. I'm actually surprised that isn't a little bit busier. But I guess it's just the huge combination of options for them to get around. Uh, so, yeah, at least it's getting some use. It's not totally dead. And then this little hillside plaza um, spills back up into an office park that arrives back at that initial couplet system. Uh, that comes from the start of the city where again there's more tram stops interlinking people back to an intercity bus station here uh, which is getting a nice bit of use and there's a ton of course we did an episode in orchid bay's playlist of uh, reworking every single public transport line to be a bit more efficient and we increased the usage by like 50 percent you see what we've got here now for five thousand four hundred uh, residents and uh, nearly six thousand tourists going through orchid bay's public transport in a week and I'm sure you know we could go back and do that efficiency episode again and maybe squeeze another 5 or 10% out of it uh, just to really hammer home how efficient it is, but not needed, you know, it flows really nicely. Um, just a simple, I guess these are just a diamond interchange, isn't it? Just in vanilla. But uh, nice, just flows, isn't it? Not backing up at all. Nice vanilla traffic lights here, which is rare to see. And then uh, cycling coming through here too. And then we've got some more uh, luxurious suburbia. Um, up here with the mid-century modern stuff and this suburb flows down towards the water and then the train lines and all the networks kind of flow off and then that really kind of completes our initial sort of starting setup of what we did um, with Orchid Bay uh, there's of course industry over here as well which we'll touch on while we're over this side um, we've got a, a pretty significant train system here actually we'll get kind of a bird's eye view of this of this network here so there's industry further down this side if you're sort of heading south from this point. And then we use some one-way uh, train lines here as well just to help direct the train traffic onto different networks as they all arrive into this big sort of train interchange terminus. And uh, it was storing some goods here. We've got uh, cargo train infrastructure as well. There's warehouses and commercial. And just a little industrial sort of freight battery, I guess, is the best way to describe it. And, you know, there's trains coming through and... Getting back on their, on their journey to the outside world. That just flows. It's just nice and easy. 
Now this also joins back in with this area over here where we did some Brooklyn and Queens. And then we also drew up uh, some more industry around here using um, Avania's industrial evolution stuff when this first came out. And finding an excuse to use these new industrial highways. And again, just a power of orientation, right? You know, I can imagine many different industrial estates have drove past on the motorways of the UK to sort of driving past monstrous industrial infrastructure like this. So I really enjoyed it. A combination of power plants, zoning, and uh, unit factories all came in really nicely. Uh, then, of course, at the end of this one, we've got our um, oil refinery, airport refueling tanks, using the monorail as a bit of a fake pipeline. There's not too much to review out here. It's just a pretty simple um, industry building. Really want to kind of focus today's episode on kind of the transport and the infrastructure and but the city as a whole now rather than zoning in on individual builds. So this is an example um, of where traffic is a little bit backed up in Orchid Bay. So this is just coming out of the um, oil industry. Uh, my initial thought process here was that like, oh, they'll probably come out here and uh, take this interchange uh, that Imperator built for us when he did his collab. But that hasn't been the case. They're actually coming down here and clogging up um, the airport roundabout quite a bit. So probably need to have a look here at some traffic uh, relief solutions. I remember saying when we built this that this trumpet might become a four directional interchange at some point and this was the reason why so we'll probably do that in a live stream i imagine just to crack open this trumpet and allow access onto the highway directly from outside the refinery it will clear up a lot of this traffic if not pretty much all of it uh, we've also got our forestry build here as well this is our first and only forestry in the city actually um but really enjoy the way it came out some really great orientation up against the highway here uh, so that ended up uh, working really nicely uh, this of course then spills into um orchid Bay regional airport uh, which we'll have a look at some numbers around orchid Bay as well let's see what we're looking like the three million passengers have come through the airport already and um it's not actually too far off of its uh, next attractiveness score either which is quite nice as 32 active flights doesn't make an enormous profit but i've never really relied on airports to make profit anyway to be honest they're just uh, nice bits of transport infrastructure aren't they there's also more bus convergence here as well again coming back to the episode where we did uh, the kind of public transport rework it's nice to have you know so many buses coming and going from this place again just link all over the city and with different methods uh, then we also have our farm as well and i really liked how we did uh, the road and i actually just remember we didn't connect this road did we um this was due to be connected we have a little look here yeah and i wanted to connect this i think into the refinery over this way uh, which again will probably do some good for having this one over here alleviated as well. Uh, just kind of thinking where else we could bring that out. Maybe we'll bring it out the other side of the airport and do something over here when we eventually do something. Uh, currently I'm not really sure what this area of Orchid Bay looks like in the foothills of some of the smaller mountain ranges. Uh, there's some pretty interesting landscape over here. There's also a lot more natural resource as well. So I'm not entirely sure what's happening here. But I imagine that this road will link into that one day. Uh, which will come right under the runway, which is a really cool approach to see this jet landing here. That's a sight line I'm very proud of. <laughs> that was a really fun one to work in. Uh, and then, of course, they also take o off um, over our farmland as well, which looks really sweet. Hopefully this guy's going to take off. No, he's coming in, isn't he? But uh, yeah, it ended up turning out really nicely. Um, train line flowing through this as well. There's an insanely busy train service. Uh, coming out of Orchid Bay, and this is the one that goes to that transport hub over in Two Church. Uh, we can spot it out over here. Uh, yeah, that one there, the train station looking at earlier. That's where that train line runs to. You can see it come all the way back through here. So that one was um, a really nice one. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Uh, and then there's just some uh, suburbia out here, the Fields of Golden, um, I believe it's called. And then we arrive back at another uh, simple service interchange. I think there's also something to be said for how simple... Orchid Bay's vanilla service interchanges are, but how efficiently they work. You know, for a highway interchange here near industry, um, it's not flowing too badly at all, is it? Uh, up here, coming into our first power plant build, we did this one. And then there's also the big kind of sports shopping out of town sort of complex that we had over this side as well. Uh, this side of town definitely isn't finished. I want to do something uh, here within this space, within the road frames that we've got available. Uh, and then this spills up into the Bait Plateau, uh, which was another little farming village we did. There's a train line here again that interlinks with all the different train networks that are across Orchid Bay. And uh, you can really get a sense of the 
the scale of the city from here as well. We've seen that arrivals pier we did sort of four or five episodes ago. Uh, you can see the International Airport and the Olympic Park from here. A little bit of the skyline as well. You see the mines over there. Uh, there's the Denefu town over there, which I realise we've missed off. We'll head back over there in a second. Yeah, and then this comes up to our zoo as well, which is nice and rural. There's cable cars here feeding people back down into the transport hub that comes out of the little stadium complex over there, which is quite nice. Uh, not don't think there's a vast amount of people actually using this cable car solution. 46, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not mega, but you know, it's 46 people that aren't driving, isn't it? Uh, and then we come into the church, not the church, the zoo, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why. We've got two churches on the brain, I think. Uh, nice little uh, bus interchange design with using the pedestrian roads at the front of the uh, zoo, which gets a lot of use. And then uh, zoo maintenance, lots of parking. Uh, how much is the difference as vanilla parking made to the, the vanilla experience? Just um, so easy and convenient now to pop in parking, which before in vanilla was such a pain to achieve. Uh, we also have the King of Mashed Potatoes, suggest this should be called the Eggs and Legs Wildlife Sanctuary, which we have in some bush art on the hillside behind, which is really cool. Yeah, I really like this zoo. It's, um, again, the only zoo in the city, but it's a nice one. Uh, and then this really kind of starts the countryside expanse of Orchid Bay. You'll see more scattered towns. There's camping down here. Uh, there's the nuclear plant over this side as well, which turned out really sweetly. Uh, there's also a few candies collaboration here as well, where she did a real big sort of family adventure park using lots of different unique assets. If you haven't seen a few candies collab in the city, definitely come check it out. Uh, she did a really good job of this. And then more really cool train infrastructure here as well. So this one goes back to Denise over here. And then this big um, train line swoops up this big radiated hill and then heads back up into the town over there before passing over uh, some of our camping designs, which I really enjoy piecing this build together. Uh, doing some sort of camping prop detailing uh, for a vanilla camping build was a lot of fun. And uh, again, I love that train line too. <laughs> the bridge the bridge over the big valley is um, a real cool aesthetic for the trains for me. So I really enjoyed how it all turned out. Uh, and then where should we go from here? Should we cross over to Wing 4 Hills? Yeah. So this was, um, I'll tell you what we will do for this particular build is we'll chuck on the gradient overlay. Uh, because pretty insane <laughs> so when we first arrived here i was like i want to do residential in this area between the mountains and the highway but it was super super hilly uh, so we made a point of making a bit of a town center out of the hilltop i did some fun roundabout designs here with um, bus only roads so they have kind of quick access in and out of the little bus plaza terminal that goes on here uh, the buses do sometimes queue but they're just waiting to take their turn to come and stop over and then they stop on different sides. There's school bus routes up here into different ones. Um, this monorail, not monorail, a uh, cable car, uh, is the one that links back into Two Church over the hill and far away from where we were earlier. But this now completes its line here with, again, just another bus interchange plaza. There's a ton of these all over the city. They're either custom built or they're all coming out of an inner city bus station. Uh, and then the rest of the suburb is all tiered with Green Cities Residential, which is, of course, one of my favourites. And again, we just followed those topography lines with the roads. And the suburb kind of built itself, to be honest, this one. And then we also spent some time in a stream here as well. Um, adding in some of Bad Peanuts sports venues uh, when we did eventually uh, come out this way. So it was a lot of fun building this suburb. And um, remember, we had some noise pollution here as well. We added in the sound barriers, which totally fixed that problem. And then I think that really completes now sort of the start of Orchid Bay. So you can kind of see how all these areas on this initial landmass all tie in together and work together. And uh, yeah, it's it's nice. Definitely more to do out here. Um, this space here again is kind of between the highways and the river. Will definitely grow out to be another sort of significant rural town. I think definitely based around this island. And um, that we prepared when we did our highway rest stop during some uh, sort of national network preparation. So definitely expect another town out here uh, before Orchid Bay uh, comes to a close. And we'll also swing by Denefu as well over here. So initially this one was just this lake up in the mountains. We ended up doing some terraforming here to kind of break this out into a waterfall. That then flows through the town and then back out into the uh, rivers of Orchid Bay up this way. And uh, this was a really fun build as well. Uh, really happy we're leaving the island in here too. Uh, bridge over the 
over the river. A really nice, kind of cute, um, older town center through here as well with some older buildings. Again, nice positioning and orientation of service assets. I really love it. Again, I don't want to get too involved in the detailing. <laughs> really just want to show off the kind of the perspective and the flow of the city, but uh, that is the nephew. Uh, and then we will, yeah, we'll cover Imperator's beautiful Air Force base. <laughs> so, of course, we all love Imperator. Uh, German Genius gave us a wonderful collab building an Air Force base using a whole bunch of different assets, sports fields, libraries, industry, and um, worker barracks. Then the airport itself, these like fantastic little bunkers that look like they might store some planes or mun munitions or something. Just an insanely cool build from Imperator to construct an Air Force base like this. Um, really love it. Again, if you haven't seen it, it's on his channel. Highway also goes underneath there as well. Uh, which is just a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed watching Imperator build here. Then he also built this interchange for us um, a little bit further down here as well, which was nice of him. There's also another interchange over here too that comes back into Two Church, which again is showing signs of having a little bit of traffic at the minute, isn't it? If anything, there's just some idiot AI lane switching going on here at the last second, isn't there? You don't need to do that. <laughs> just go straight on. That's just some AI idiot here causing the backup there. Um, but you know, besides that, for the most part, it flows um, pretty well. This interchange keeps people on and off the highway near a industrial area. And then that kind of does it, I think, for this sort of quadrant of the city, I think, doesn't it? That's um, everything we've looked at there is really cool. And especially from the bird's eye perspective, kind of the whole of Orchid Bay from the bird's eye perspective is uh, very cool, though. It's really nice to follow all the networks and you know, trace where each line comes and starts from. It's um, a lot of fun to look at this city. So that kind of rounds off that area. Of course, there's also um, the Slipper of Slanesh as well. Another one of our dedicated... Uh, Warhammer Parks after Nurgle's Garden in uh, New York, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. Again, these guys at the edge of the viewing decks have just a really cool view um, across the downtown regions. I love it. I really like how this view turned out. So now we'll cross sort of into the downtown slash more metropolitan landmass of Orchid Bay. So we can see that how this is divided up. Um, it wasn't originally an island. Um, it is now because we brought this canal um, through the landmass, which uh, separates off this whole downtown section as own individual island within the bay, uh, which is really nice, actually. I like how it turned out. Uh, we've got an interchange here um, that we actually used all the way back in Palavan. Um, that still, still flows really nicely. This is a great highway interchange, this one. Uh, so we're back over near that big cycling convergence point now too, nearby to the stadium. Uh, so this big arterial runs right through the middle of the island, uh, connecting multiple different suburbs and builds. One of the most interesting parts of this entire landmass outside of the skyline is the bus network that flows through here. So I'll kind of show this off as well from a bird's eye perspective. So you can see the bus lanes come through Karen um, over here. They do link up with the bus station at Wingfor Hills alongside some other intercity connections over by Sharon. But the main point of it is that this bus-only road starts from this bus station and then flows all the way through here, switching from highway bus roads back to pedestrian bus roads so we can make stops with it, um, all against a keyed waterfront. And it goes all the way down through multiple different districts and multiple parks as well, keeping people walking on those keys, stopping by ferry transport. It comes up through here to stop again by more metro. And then it just flows all the way down the river coastline of Orchid Bay and it was a project I thought I might end up losing interest in just because like, oh no we're not going to keep buses going forever like buses aren't that sort of interesting <laughs> but they are as it turns out because it ran all the way into the downtown and then terminates at this intercity bus station here and um, so we'll analyze the line itself it should be the Jigglypuff bus line here yeah let's have a look at it yeah so it's, uh, the Jigglypuff downtown ring um, let's have a little look at the line itself. So again, just like the rest of the transport, it's not horrendously busy. It's just helping to keep sort of a smaller outer line suburban population moving into some of the larger areas, interlinking them with major transport hubs. So I really enjoyed how this bus network came off. And um, yeah, it was a successful sort of test of kind of a bus ring. My initial concept was that it would run as like a bus ring road around the entire island. 
but the way we developed the opposite side of what is essentially the coastline, um, it just didn't allow it to come through anymore. We ended up bringing that cycle infrastructure back in, and then there's monorail and metro over here that really handle the bulk of the people. And then this whole area, again, up by the waterfront where we just were, uh, there's little park details up this way, um, cute little pedestrian pathways that come down at different elevations. Uh, water wall zoning, which is always nice. There's more detailing around here with kind of high school campuses. Um, there's also a metro system under here as well. And um, yeah, this transport hub turned out really nicely as well. This is one of the second ones we did, I think, this major transport center. Uh, there's metro that comes across from the other side. Uh, also trains as well uh, from multiple different directions and levels. We'll hopefully see some people here. So this is one of the train line that goes back to the regional airport. Back through that initial uh, train station we saw by Two Church. And this is all focused around a really nice pedestrian plaza. Um, I really like how this space turned out. There's different angles in here. Uh, lots of bush lining, some little bench details as well near a bus stop. And then just see now everyone converging. They get off one method of public transport and they get onto another. Um, there's no people pulling out pocket cars here. They're all just walking along to get to go catch the bus or to go catch the metro or to go get the underground metro or a monorail, get on the bike, you know, whatever it is they want to do. Uh, and then that's what they do over here. And this big elevated number here that crosses over um, is the one that runs out from the slip of Slash where this couplet system merges back into a six lane arterial. Uh, this flows right through the heart of the downtown. Um, I definitely wanted to have some sort of six lane elevated beast running right through the inner city. And it just so happened to meet up with uh, the monorail, the metro and the train lines all running through the heart of downtown Orchid Bay over here as well. Which when you've got them racing each other coming down the lines is, uh, <laughs> is really cool. Really enjoyed how this whole visual here turned out. I think at night time actually. If we dare to flick on a bit of nighttime spices, this is one of the best views in the city. Um, seeing all these networks just running into the heart of the downtown is very, very cool. As that evil chirper balloon <laughs> comes, comes back into perspective. Uh, but yes, either way, love all the road networks in and around the downtown Orchid Bay. Uh, we also come through here as well. This big arterial links back up with uh, some lots more designs here. Okay, it's hard not to get stuck on the detailing. <laughs> There's just... There's so much to look at. I love benches and fences. Goodness gracious, it makes the city come alive, doesn't it? Uh, little plazas at the foot of our towers over here as well. And then, of course, Orchid Bay's main financial plaza um, is really the heart of the downtown. Uh, and this asset from Financial Districts actually lent itself perfectly well for it, didn't it? We've got our disaster memorial here again, which is aligned with the observation tower on the waterfront. And, uh, traffic through downtown is nice. You know, this is our busiest area. These are all unit buildings drawing tons of tourists and workers. Not to mention the public transport convergence here, which we'll have a look at in a second. But, yeah, I really love this plaza. From whichever way you look, you just get a real nice angle of the skyline. Different buildings kind of climbing up over here as well. There's a particular favourite view of mine, actually, uh, which we'll head over here. It's by this metro station that we extended. And using the same tiles around the pedestrian road and some simple props around a metro station did a lot for it, didn't it? Uh, but yeah, I think it's as you look up, yeah, look up through here. Just the layers of height there between all the different buildings and how deep that kind of view goes. That's, um, that's Orchid Bay all over for me, that viewpoint right there. Really simple, just a simple view sightline through the downtown towers, but I really like it. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so this is kind of the inner downtown. It's all just pedestrianised and plazas and unit buildings. And it flows nicely. There's some hearts of Korea over here as well. And it's a, it's a really busy area. There's also a tram system coming through here too. Now, tons of cyclists making use of this cycle road as well. Which don't forget also connects back in with that cycle infrastructure that we had near the start of the city. So again, just a highlight from that starting roundabout. You can cycle all the way here as well. Uh, and then this beast here, um, absolute monster of a transport hub, is the busiest in the city by a good mile. Um, it's been as high as 4,300, I think I've seen it. That's pretty quiet at the minute, 2,300 is quite low for it. But yeah, it's um, it's nuts. So the train line from Orchid Bay Airport connects here, alongside the International Airport in the ocean as well. So this all comes through. 
Um, there's a monorail that goes from the airport to the uh, terminus over there. There's also trams that run in the downtown, and then there's two metro lines over here as well. So it's just insane. It's every platform is rammed <laughs> with just people wanting to get on and off from different airports to unique buildings. And honestly, you could just sit here all day and watch this building. I think maybe we need to make like a big time lapse short of this and just show people just how many people come and go. Look at the monorail. <laughs> Look how busy. The monorail line is, it's just ridiculous. And then of course they're all interchanging themselves as well, you know, once someone gets off a monorail, they're probably going to go catch a tram or a metro or another train over here. And uh, it's just relentless. It is absolutely insane. We'll see some of the numbers on this train line here, just how busy it is, how full the trains are. Uh, yeah, definitely the crowning jewel of Orchid Bay's regional sort of transport infrastructure, this one. Uh, lots of fun to watch as well. You could sit here for hours <laughs> and just go up over this transport hub. It's a lot of fun. And of course, it's all integrated into the sort of symmetry design of the skyline as well, especially bearing in mind uh, the observation tower here with sightline down to the financial tower. And then there's a couple of systems through here as well. Uh, that brings us back into another transport terminus where the monorail uh, does meet with uh, cruise liners and also some bus lines coming and going here as well, which you can see. And it's all just a collection of very satisfying convergence in the downtown. There's a really nice pedestrian area through this space too. Uh, I enjoy putting this one together. Nice little park designs over here. Little custom playgrounds at the foot of the school. And uh, yeah, again, just more views to sight lines we'll try and get on the ground here and just enjoy the mega crawling height that happens from pretty much wherever you look at the downtown um from this perspective it's really nice i also head over this way as well where we've got our brick London keys area of course uh which did have the kind of old train line design through here right now maybe this was once a train line but it's now been converted uh, into a pedestrian pathway and then the old baseball training facility again there you can sit here on a a nice day and enjoy the, the sight lines up from the ground of what the Sims would see living in Orchid Bay. It's uh it's very cool to look at. I'm very proud of the downtown. And then this area develops into just more kind of waterfront commercial. Um, I really like how the uh, shape of the key turned out here. How it kind of sort of smoothly rounds out around the edge of the landmass turned out really nicely. Uh, so yeah, that kind of rounds off the bulk of the downtown landmasses here. And without getting too involved in so many different builds and then while we're over here we'll cover these builds and um, of course international airport uh, we'll have a look at how many passengers this has pulled uh, compared to uh, the regional one which is actually less but i guess it's a lot younger so that would make sense uh, and again it's very nearly at its max attractiveness score it uh, doesn't make money this one uh, which is fine again i'm not Massively bothered about making money through airports. It's really just to have them as a transport in infrastructure. Uh, but this episode did very well. You guys always enjoy an airport island. And um, yeah, one of the best ones I think we've done. Uh, we definitely had the aviation police on us for having it too close to the skyline. But I believe there's a Chinese city. I can't remember the name of it at all. Um, I'll try and put it up on screen in the comments. But apparently it is quite reminiscent of having towers near the runway. Uh, that happens in China. Um, so I was really happy with it. It's a lot of fun to build. I love the way how the uh, monorail blade splits off into a one-way loop here and actually keeps uh, both people, well, both stations busy. Um, there are people using both of them here. Again, I mentioned this in the build that like it was overkill to have this many clothes together, but uh, again, it was just for the symmetry, which I really wanted to design in here. So again, this is the one that goes back into that central transit hub. So again, you can see the fur roads coming out of an international airport it's very quiet <laughs> there's just so many people also taking the metro over here as well and um, there's also a metro connection underneath this main terminal building here uh, which you can see also links back in now with the olympic park we did last episode as well which is really busy now see people walking on those keys uh, to get toward the stadium uh, which are all filling up with people for a match day which is nice so we did this recently, this was last episode, so this one's pretty fresh in the mind, and this of course goes into the Eggerglades National Park, uh, which was a lot of fun using kind of a really awkward landmass that was really separated away from the rest of the city. So I think a National Park was kind of the perfect build uh, to come sit over here. 
Uh, I really like how this turned out. Of course, again, pretty new episode, so pretty fresh in the mind of all the Orchid Bears. Uh, and then we'll head back down at uh, the other end of the area here where we arrive back in Karen at this arterial road near the interchange and the cycle infrastructure. Uh, another downtown couplet system kicks into play here as well that we saw running uh, near our transport hub and airport designs. Uh, this comes straight the way through here and joins up with cycling infrastructure and monorail. Uh, there's some lots of nice little park designs here as well which turned out pretty cutely. Uh, some nice sort of wavy, uh, curvy pathways are always appreciated over a train line, aren't they? Uh, so that worked out really nicely. Um, also, yeah, we'll talk about this while we're here, because this was a pretty cool design. Uh, so rather than just having the train on the ground, I wanted to kind of like do a little ditch and then ever so slightly elevate uh, the high-speed rail viaduct that comes with uh, one of the parks. And it's made an enormous difference, hasn't it? Just to the aesthetic of a train line running through a park. It looks like it's got a safety barrier on it. And like it's kind of, you know, elevated off the ground so people can't just walk onto it. Like it is actually a secure rail line. Again, with great views back into the city, right? What a wonderful approach that is. And sort of coming in there, isn't it? Like, oh, like you know you've arrived in Orchid Bay. Especially when you see that monorail go across in the foreground. And that's a really nice perspective of the skyline there, isn't it? I think we'll get a screenshot of that for our patrons for today's episode. Uh, yes, and then this comes down uh, into a really nice little slip interchange here that isn't totally omnidirectional. Uh, there's kind of slip ramps here. People need to turn off and get on a different direction, but they don't need to because most directions are accounted for somewhere nearby anyway. Uh, and then this all comes down. We've got a really nice wavy key front here as we arrive into Karen Town, which is a combination of commercial sort of town plazas like this with shopping centers and parks, uh, the stadiums around, green space. Sort of pathways and unique ploppables and nightlife and also try to bring in some nightlife meets industry on the waterfront here. Uh, this was a really divisive build for Karen. <laughs> Wanted to try and bring in a bit more of a CD vibe. Uh, also got our trolley bus flowing through here as well, which is nice, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but this turned out really nicely again as well. Uh, more little custom playgrounds over here. Uh, some more brick winding keys as we arrive at um, another transport infrastructure here as well. Uh, there's sightseeing buses, uh, trains, and uh, trolley buses all meeting over here, which is very nice, of course. Uh, and then as we come through here, this links back into Wingfall Hills, and then there's the two factory districts here, uh, which was an excuse to just satisfy some industrial demand. Uh, Sharon's factory is significantly busier, but it does have the um, airport uh, train station in here for cargo as well, so that's definitely getting quite a bit of use. And then, yeah, lots of airport aprons and uh, unique buildings. We've also got the train police headquarters over here as well, of course, uh, with the uh, colossal rail building sat there on the shoreline. And there's not kind of too much to go into here, just sort of generally show the overarching view. Uh, we kind of made a point here of how custom fit interchanges are a lot better in most scenarios for uh, diverting traffic into different areas. You can see here how the different layers kind of crisscross each other and you can sort of see where people get on in different directions and how they're choosing to move around this interchange. Um, so yeah, that was a nice little sort of dumbbell fusing with some extra slip ramps that come over. So this was a really satisfying one to put together. I very much enjoyed that. And then all these networks, of course, flow into the next town over of Sharon, which has some nice designs with pathways and keys against it. We did Sharon Marina out here as well, uh, taking inspiration from Imperator's man-made canals rather than using the regular canals. Uh, we've got some keys here that allow the rivers to flow directly into the ocean uh, where there is some fishing activity as well here under all the networks that cross over it. And yeah, we've got some industry over here. Uh, there's some nice public transport convergence in um, Sharon Town Centre actually because uh, there's a lot of trains meeting here. There you go, you can see three trains in the platform at once. Uh, so there's lots of people getting off here. Uh, quite a few pocket cars. I mean, you can you know, you compare this to how Two Church was. It kind of goes to show... Maybe Sharon's public transport infrastructure isn't as sort of hooked in as the rest of the city because we're getting a lot of pocket cars in this instance, whereas the other ones we don't get that. But that just tells me that they're not able to get to where they want to go with public transport, which is probably something we could improve on. But that aside, there's a lot of people walking down here to get onto different buses that come through uh, Sharon Town. And then there's also an intercity, uh, not intercity, sorry, um, trolley bus network through here as well. 
So I really enjoyed uh, piecing Sharon and Karen together, of course, our two rival towns. And, uh, it was a very nice kind of slow crawl back to suburbia away from that very distant skyline over there, right? So I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then the pretty new town of Lotus, of course, this one will be pretty fresh in the mind as well. But just looking as an excuse to round out the coastline. And uh, what this does from here is kind of does complete Orchid Bay's coastline, which was an absolute monstrous project. I reckon in a live stream we'll probably do some sort of decorative farmland and outer line suburb houses out this way. But it does really complete the shoreline from all the way through here to parks, industry, uh, sort of monorail lines and cycle infrastructure, cruise terminals, uh, all the way around up to that international airport. So uh, yeah, a really interesting bit of the city thing to look kind of down the lateral line of the coast really gives... I think kind of a sense of impression of the scale and the size of just how big and large Orchid Bay has become over the past 71 episodes, including this one. Uh, pretty cool. Re real big fan of it. That uh, plus the live stream as well, of course. Uh, so there's a little classic um, English interchange over here as well. The roundabout above the motorway with some slip lanes on it. Um, keeps traffic moving for the most part. Uh, and then this does come off into a little dual carriageway system. Uh, which goes back to the highway rest stop we said earlier. And then also another trumpet system down here right on the edge of the map. Uh, this is where we mentioned we might build another rural town out here one day. Uh, and then we arrive at the other rural town of Denise. Which is all focused around this stream running through the central park. Which turned out super nice. Uh, lots of bench and path detailing around here to create open green space. Uh, with a little bit of welcome European zoning as well. I like how we integrated that into the city. There's some hillside stuff going on here with pathways linking back people back through. And then just some general outer line of suburban space here by the rivers. And again, Denise has one of those wonderful views, doesn't it? From sort of town to city. Really like how you can see all the skyline there. Just very cool. Big, big fan of how all this turned out. And again, traffic around here is just a dream. It's uh, flowing really nicely on the um, dual carriageway system that we set up. With multiple different roundabouts on it. And yeah, that kind of rounds off this edge of the city here, doesn't it? So... Uh, definitely still some networks to expand out here. We can see there's a dead network here. Um, there's two over here, a rail and a bridge. But uh, again, kind of similar to the other side of the map over there. I'm not sure if we're going to have um, the node count to fill this space out. We'll have to wait and see what we're going to do with it. But uh, yeah, for right now, no current plans over here. There's definitely more uh, prioritised areas within the city. Uh, and then with that area kind of recapped and... Uh, covered over there that kind of leaves us back to Orchid Bay Eye and then to cover sort of this portion of the map over here doesn't it so we'll drop back down over to Orchid Bay Eye so this was an episode uh, where we asked a online chat AI bot I think it was chat GPT um, to design a suburb for us so it said that it should be waterside it should be keyed and the houses should be built using eco-friendly materials uh, there should be a big sort of pedestrian mall with luxury shopping and sports. And it was a really fun aspect, you know. I always think, can't, can't, well, try and think outside the box with the city's build. And I think if you ever stuck for inspiration, just jumping onto an AI bot and asking for an idea <laughs> turned out into a really fun bit of infrastructure. I really enjoyed piecing this together. It kind of gave me some new perspective as to what to put in. Um, again, there's more bus lines running through here. Uh, which then jumps across to the other island which lies on the other side of the downtown where we do come into uh, Swank Square, I think this is, isn't it? My name, yeah, this is Swank Square, named after patron David Swank. Uh, and yes, look at this. So we had a, a really cool idea of centralising the campus administration building. And then we've got a bit of a legal district over here. So we have the legal offices and there's also ferry infrastructure on the river. Over here as well, alongside pedestrian links back onto the slipper of Slanesh Park over there as well. Uh, but a bit of a repurposing of some campus assets here, uh, in tandem with some skyscrapers, which turned out really nice. We've got the School of Law here as well. And this is that tram that comes from Two Church Transport Hub. Uh, you remember that we saw near the start of the video. 
Uh, this is the line where it terminates just a little bit further down there. Uh, then we've got lots of outer line of suburbia here with another train line that cuts right through the middle of the suburb. Uh, before we arrive at our Asia Town inspired build, so this is a combination of Korean, Chinese and Japanese assets, so I can't really call it Chinatown. So we just had to settle on Asia Town because <laughs> it's a combination of all the different assets. But I wanted to see um, how feasible a Chinatown slash Asia Town build was in vanilla. Using all the hearts of Korea parks, there's the Chinese temples in here as well, the Panda Sanctuary, a little bit of IT cluster that went quite a long way. I did some really nice decoration at the front of the temple. Uh, this was really, really cute. I loved how we used the plaza's fountains at the front of the building with jacaranda trees. Uh, yeah, definitely this little space here remains one of my favourite builds of just sitting and exploring with some assets and thinking, you know, what can we do with these? And um, this view at night time in particular is um, quite tasty, if I do say so myself. As uh, you get all the pink lights from the Hearts of Korea buildings and just in the foreground of the main sort of financial uh, CBD. Uh, love it. Really like this area. Uh, this then flows down into some more um, Green City stuff over here where our trams... It doesn't terminate, it just ends its line here and actually meets up with a downtown tram. There you go, you can see them coming in now and then moving around on different lines with each other. Again, it's not the busiest thing in the world, but you know all these sort of methods of transport that aren't super busy are all helping just alleviate pressure off of the other one. You could almost argue Orchid Bay's transport infrastructure is overkill because there's so much of it. I'd actually be interested to know, not that I really pay attention to the budget and the economy anymore at this stage in the game, um, but how much are we spending on public transport? I'd love to be able to tell you if my menu wasn't glitched. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, but we can see um, on expense, we're spending uh, 149,000 on public transport, which is by far outside. Yeah, unique buildings is the closest one, isn't it? Yeah. So 149 grand a week on public transport infrastructure um, with trains and planes accounting for the most of that cost so we're spending more on transport than we are anything else in the city uh, which is definitely a testament to the play style i think of slowing down and building out these different districts uh, but yes then there's uh, some original baseball parks here <laughs> when we didn't have uh, bad peanuts assets we built a little sports village over this side as well by the train line and uh, a little bit of a tower over here as well yeah this whole area of the city is really nice did some like farmland here Kind of coming from the vibe is, you know, there's some old farmer who refuses to sell his land and as a result has just been developed and developed and developed around him. Uh, which is a really nice way to use some farm industry and some fertile land here. There's also more cargo infrastructure and, of course, import and export function uh, for the industry. And then there's more fishing over here as well. Uh, and then there's more Brickman and Key stuff over here. We've also got the Schroeds Media Park using the Hamilton's department store, which was a really kind of nice sits and fits moment. And there's also kind of multi-layered bridges coming in here as well, as we get people crossing back onto different arterial connections coming out of the downtown. Uh, this one actually arrives in the uh, Brickwood and Keys area over here. Uh, and then there's an amusement park uh, that flows into more residential and just a really nice sort of tightly packed in detailed space. There's a lot of fun to be had out here. And it all culminates with the Statue of Liberty placement right at the head there. Which again, at night time, we'll, we'll throw it on while we're here, right? If there's, if there's a video to fawn over the night time views of Orchid Bay, it's this one, isn't it? <laughs> it really is this one. And there you go. That just tickles the pickle, doesn't it, right? It ripens the tomato. It peels the banana. It just nails home everything I love about Vanilla City Skyline to me, you know, when you see that grander project finally come in and that final sight line hits you in the eyes, it's just uh, the definition of 11 Secret Herbs and Spices for me. It's where I get a lot of enjoyment out of this game. And then yes, this all comes in with more campus buildings, uh, the broadcast centre, a high-tech building. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed this media park. It was a lot of fun. Big shout out to Shrodes as well, who was one of our patrons. Uh, for suggesting a media park in this space. Uh, and then that sort of completes this little island up here, doesn't it? Uh, we'll hop across the river into the Lunar Mauler Mall and uh, Biffa Gardens over here as well. 
so the Lunar Mauler was a first concept really when we got the Mauls a content creator pack from King Leno was to how well does this pair with pedestrian roads to create a, a proper functioning outdoor mall that looks like a mall and we dropped in the unit buildings here alongside some zoning there's multi-story car parks there's little like alleyways through here as well where you can get access to all the admin of um all the back of the stores definitely one of my favorite builds in orchid bay this one uh, and then we have this one cutting through the middle there's like kids playgrounds here as well lots and lots of green belt now for those in our discord you would have seen me post this view over here as well and if we just dare to stick on a bit more night time again there's a really cool view <laughs> across the lateral line of the skyline here uh, from Luna Mauler. Uh, really, really nice that is. Now again, I think we'll grab ourselves an old faithful screenshot of that one as well. Uh, but then that's sort of it. Just a big mall car park. Definitely taking inspiration from some kind of more like American malls. Like we saw quite a lot in Phoenix taking inspiration for Ilos. Uh, just these kind of big shopping centers surrounded with car parking. Uh, it turned out really nicely. Uh, then we also did some Green Cities developments, tediously waiting <laughs> for these uh, 4x3 Green Cities towers to grow in uh, alongside the swimming pool, child healthcare, and just a more creative way to satisfy some residential demand, you know. We're all linked in with pathways and public transport. Uh, there's a really nice sort of train convergence point here as well as these two uh, train lines here uh, kind of hooking with each other. And this was a great mirrored asset. It actually looks like one single train station doesn't it but it's not it's two separate ones uh, so i really like how that turned out there's some great path work over here as well uh, linking back into underground metro stations and cycling up and around it just looks looks fabulous doesn't it really like all these pathways and the biffa gardens is full of uh, cricket there's um benches over here as well little town center designs using car parking and Appropriate placement of assets, different bus stops here as well. Uh, just, yeah, just really nice, cohesive sort of suburbia designs here. I really enjoyed how sort of this particular town centre here turned out. And then, of course, after the recent Temple episodes, uh, Biffa Gardens is also now home to one of our scientific research centres up here. Which, again, was pretty fresh in the memory. Uh, this was just an excuse to use our radar with the uh, climate research centre as well. And then we also kind of paired this with the Asian inspired temple up on the mountain tops that overlook the Egger Glades. They use more of the Hearts of Korea assets with a Japanese asset and some uh, Japanese gardens and tropical gardens. And then you can also see some fine folks here uh, enjoying the wrong view. Turn around, <laughs> you'll get the best view over there. But yeah, that's a really nice use of the mountain tops, uh, these two sort of temple builds. Uh, I really liked how they turned out. Uh, further down this coastline, there's just more kind of generic suburbia. There's nothing massively of note here outside of some uh, actually really nice sort of planter and cafe detailing. I really liked how this turned out. Uh, and then this sort of follows uh, the river uh, back along where there's more park detailing. Uh, and then we've got a uh, little school park over here. And then I think we got, what did we end up calling this? Was this Baked Bitties Beach or something? Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> Baked Bitties Beach is what we're talking about. Uh, yes, and then this just has a little... Uh, it was sand at some point. It seems to have now grown back as grass, which is a little bit irritating. I don't know why that's happened. Uh, but it's just vanilla theme, I guess, isn't it? And then, yeah, this all links back into the bridge. That comes out of downtown, uh, near where that baseball stuff and the whole bus ring was that goes back into the arterial, uh, right into that inner city. Uh, over here needs some significant amount of work. I remember my initial plan here was to bring this road through the mountain as a tunnel. But that arterial connection just hasn't ended up establishing itself because it came out of here instead. So this area needs to be reworked at some point before we call it a day. Not entirely sure what's going to happen with that. Oh, that sort of rounds out these areas here now, doesn't it? We'll cross over the main mountain range into uh, definitely one of the more unique areas. So this is Old Haven. And the idea behind this section was that it was an older downtown. And it's the presence of kind of like the clock tower and the European high density stuff. I did a really nice thing here with a lighthouse with just a little kind of breakwater that comes out into the ocean. Uh, a combination of Africa assets with European just to try and add a bit of an older town sort of seaside vibe into it. it. Ended up turning out really nicely, especially the use of the African assets itself was just um, 
yeah, a very pleasant surprise, I think, to say the least. We've got a boat museum down here as well. Um, some pretty crap waterfront. Actually, I'm not a massive lover of this particular lineup here. These After Dark assets are very hard to use in vanilla, I think. So uh, probably rework this area. And we definitely will be back here as well because we ended the build here when we hit 25 tiles. However, since that point, um, 81 tiles has obviously opened. So Haven Old Town needs to be expanded out now. So I reckon we'll get the old Market Street unique in here. And then see what we can do with some uh, sort of fun old town builds out here again, I guess. So this area definitely isn't done. But, uh, we use kind of the Barcelona super block theme. Um, lots of pathways with plazas around and whatnot and little bits of European detail. And it turned out pretty nicely. Uh, and then there's train lines flowing through here as well. You can see there's two of them. Uh, that all converge on this point. Uh, there's a little fan zone out here as well. Kind of maybe somewhere where they hold sort of Christmas markets and festivals and other sort of bits and pieces, you know, in sort of the middle of the city. Was the idea behind this at least, so... The art turned out lots of walking convergence on and around the train stations and the different areas of the city again with more cycling infrastructure available so you can actually technically cycle from here all the way to the start of the city because that cycle lane infrastructure actually connects in these areas and um, kind of all the way through this one so it's pretty crazy isn't it when you kind of you map out just exactly where you can cycle to um, i was really keen to make sure we use a lot of cycling infrastructure in Orkabay. Uh, although it's interesting to see the alloy takes that it's actually dipped off recently. <laughs> uh, we arrive at another interchange here. Uh, again, this side of the map isn't complete. I want to do a prison out here as well. Uh, sort of round out the rest of this interchange and the highway and the, the mountains and stuff. So, definitely not finished. Uh, oh, that's an illegal asset. There we go. That's why it's always good to review, isn't it? <laughs> Let's make sure we get rid of that. Thank you very much. There we go. Yeah, so this was um, Old Haven, kind of like an older sort of financial district or, you know, city centre that existed before um, sort of the main metropolitan area was really developed over the mountain range. We just did some cute little zoning in here, tried to keep the buildings relatively older style. Uh, lots of brick is what I really waited for here. Uh, this building here is like really screams Art Deco, doesn't it? So um, that fitted in really nice with the city hall over here as well. And yeah, just a little kind of slightly higher density district that, you know, is now absolutely... You can imagine this was once, like, really busy and like, oh my god, look at all those towers. You know, before sort of modern architecture and infrastructure took over. And, you know, that just absolutely dwarfs what was once considered to be sort of, you know, a real key busy hub. And then this sort of crosses over the rail lines here where we've got a real uh, big rail convergence point here. Um, of trains that run further out they come through this way as well and yeah just nice busy transport hub uh, there's another cruise terminal down here as well of course with uh, multiple different bus lines all coming out of here again there's a ton of bus lines in Orchid Bay a little pedestrian design I think pedestrian roads have definitely been one of the things I've really most welcomed into vanilla city skylines and um, being able to use them in sort of tandem with actual road networks rather than always having to rely on pathways was uh, something that I've really come to enjoy working with. I absolutely love working in a pedestrian road uh, into a build somewhere. It's um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, so the trains arriving here from all over the city, they come through these train lines here. Uh, one cuts through the mountain and comes out of Bifford Gardens uh, and then the other one runs into uh, downtown as well. But definitely this area isn't nearly as fleshed out. You can just tell from the bird's eye view that we've still got some spaces to work with around here. Uh, and then we also have our big industrial port here as well, which is super, super busy. A uh, big blend in here of zoning and um, industrial assets. And uh, looks like we've also lost a police helicopter depot from here as well. We shouldn't have lost that. It was a police helicopter here, wasn't it? It was. It was a police helicopter. I don't know why we lost that, but that should be there anyway. Uh, yes, and this comes into our cargo port. Uh, just big industrial import-export hub for the city over here. Uh, with, again, with good highway connections and also train connections too. Uh, these train lines run all the way back outside the map. Uh, coming over here. Uh, so yeah, just nice train infrastructure. Uh, crossing the bay, we arrive at the cargo airport for the district. 
Uh, which turned out really nicely again um i really like how the train how the highway goes under the base here there's a uh, little bits of detailing around the front We've got planes parked up some of those japanese buildings out in the airfield as well and we've also got the blimp depot over here as well <laughs> just because uh, we, we, we had to use it so if it was going to go somewhere then it was going here We've yet to really use helicopters and blimps as a proper method of public transport in the city. I'll definitely try and do them before we wrap the city up. But, uh, yeah, not my favourite. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try and use them. And then we've got another little, um, very mini compact trumpet interchange here as well. Uh, that gives access into that regional airport. Hopping back across the bay, we arrive at our concept of is it possible to build a vanilla naval base in city skylines using some of the worker barracks, baseball, uh, unique factories. Uh, we've got a shipyard out here as well, which really adds into that naval base feel, doesn't it? Uh, some very creative placement of some ore mining assets here as well to get these little mining vessels out here. And it was pretty convincing. You guys pretty much enjoyed it as well. Uh, the concept of, you know, can we do a naval base? So there's a lot of fun, you know. I think oftentimes if you're kind of running out of inspiration for a city, just thinking outside the box with a build or a concept and trying to work it into a space, um, there's always a way to kind of freshen things up for me. And then that kind of ties off the rest of this city. Um, there's We're going to put our space agency over here, I believe. Um, we'll do definitely have some space industry out this way. And there's also a little, a little mountain base over here, isn't that? Looks like this wants to become a stream. Coming down here, doesn't it? Well, it definitely does. It's tailor-made for it, isn't it? <laughs> that definitely wants to be a mountain stream at some point. And then in terms of future plans for Orchid Bay, um, I want to leave all these areas out here pretty underdeveloped. I want this to be home to the naval base and the air force base. I don't really want a lot of infrastructure out here besides those. And again, we'll develop at Haven Old Town a little bit more as well. And then apart from that, it's really kind of the southern edges of the map now that has to be developed. Like I said, another rural town over here. We'll see what happens with the node count as to how far we can fill this space up this way. And then also these areas over here are all pretty underdeveloped. Maybe we'll get some uh, farming a little bit further down this valley where there's so much fertile land. I think it'd be a shame to waste that. So maybe another farming uh, build a little bit further uh, down the line. But otherwise, I think that's every build pretty much visited, isn't it? We didn't spend too much time around the head of the ore mine. But again, you know, if you've seen a build that you love today, um, every build you've seen in this city, uh, it is in the playlist that is linked down below. Uh, it's got the build guide to Orchid Bay. Uh, if you want to come and check it out, then you know please do. This uh, city has become my vanilla sort of magnum opus, and it's not done yet. But you guys definitely wanted a recap for today's episode. I hope you've somewhat found it enjoyable. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments, and shares below really do go a long way to helping show the video to more people and bringing more people to the channel. Even much if you haven't enjoyed it, leave me a dislike as well. I hope this city tour was okay. Again, it's kind of hard not to get stuck into every single build and not have this video be three, four, five hours long. <laughs> because Orchid Bay is enormous and there's so much detail coming in. Uh, to the city at various points when orchid bay does finish um, as we always do definitely expect a big cinematic showcase of the entire build as we've done with all of our other previous cities so look forward to that one day of course that would be the end of orchid bay but there's still plenty more life in the city there's a lot of undeveloped map to go and as long as you guys still enjoy the cs1 content and i still enjoy building on the map you can expect orchid bay episodes for as long as i can squeeze them out uh, with that node count dwindling ever closer <laughs> it's uh, getting tight now i think but we've still got a little bit of leeway i just an enormous thank you for all the support i know that you guys in the community are very fond of orchid bay some of you now considering this your favorite city among things like palavan and nubio which i know are two very fond cities in the community so it's really nice to see how you've all just taken to our f what could be final vanilla build in cs1 at least Massive shout out to all the patrons that help support the channel indeed cities like Orchid Bay with a special roll call to Felix Wilkinson. Thank you for being patrons guys. It really does help to support the channel so I appreciate you all so so much. I'll leave some nice cinematics up of Orchid Bay today so please do enjoy them but otherwise I will shut up and leave it there. 
I would like to thank you all so much for watching and indeed all the support on the series as it's gone on over the last nearly 12 months now, isn't it? Long time. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.